Uh, hi, everyone. Greetings from Zagreb. Uh, I wish I had the opportunity to meet you in person in uh, Trento in April, but uh, due pa to pandemic, uh, at least in this format, I'm giving a lecture on the topic of migration in the Western Balkans. Um, a few words about myself. My name is Senada, Senada Sheloshavic. I'm a researcher in the Senior Research Associate, is my full title, in a public research institute in Zagreb. And uh, among other things, I hold a PhD from the European University Institute, Instituto Universitario Europeo a Firenze. And uh, I love Italy. I love uh, Toscana, I love Trento Aldige. Uh, anyhow, um, you are. Um, um, I'm sending you warm, warm uh, regards from uh, where I am. The, today's lecture is going to last about approximately half an hour. And um, I'm going to uh, speak with support of a PowerPoint presentation, which I'm going to share on screen very soon. In addition, um, I'm sending three references, um, three publications that you can uh, read and consult uh, if you have more interest in this topic. The, um, the topic of migration in the Western Balkans, let me, go, let me start here, yes. Um, uh, I'm going to divide in basically three segments. One is um, uh, refugee, the refugee crisis of 2015 and 2016 as uh, the defining moment in the in European recent history and uh, what it meant for the Balkans, where the Balkan route basically uh, was established uh, for migrants to enter from Greece into into Schengen area uh, again, uh, so from Schengen country back into the Schengen country, but through through Balkans, and uh, and then I'm going to speak also about emigration as a phenomenon which is usually not linked or discussed in the context of European migration, but is very uh, important for this region. And, uh, and then lastly, I would like uh, to, uh, I will, um, I wanted to say I would like us to discuss, but this is not going to be possible since I'm not, I'm only speaking. Uh, so I will uh, touch upon, um, a few um, uh, issues that um, explain the dynamic between the European Union and this, in, in this region in the context of the EU enlargement, uh, migration management, and uh, security concerns. So let us see, uh, this is the region of the, of the uh, Western Balkans, six countries are now comprising. Croatia used to be part of the Western Balkans, group, which is basically a name uh, designated for countries in Southeast Europe which want to join the European Union. The name was coined in, uh, in the European Commission and it used to, uh, the group used to number seven um, um, countries uh, and now it's only six because Croatia joined the European Union in 2013 on the 1st of July. I also apologize here on the map, we have only Macedonia. The official name of the country, as you know, is now North Macedonia, but this is a map which um, preceded um, the name agreement between uh, Greece and Macedonia. And, uh, and therefore, Albania, Macedonia, uh, Kosovo, Serbia, Montenegro, and Bosnia-Herzegovina, are Western Balkan countries, each uh, at a different stage of the EU accession. Uh, or potential accession. Serbia is negotiating with the European Union since 2014, Montenegro I think since 2012. Um, uh, North Macedonia and Albania were just granted a green light to start negotiations with the European Union in March this year, but the exact date has not been set yet. And uh, um, this is not a lecture about the um, accession of the Balkan countries to the uh, European Union, but uh, a lot could be said uh, about current state of affairs when it comes to enlargement of the EU. And uh, now we are left, uh, if there is time in the end of this lecture, I may touch upon 
um, the prospects uh, of the further of further enlargement um, in, in the Balkans. And uh, we have Kosovo and Bosnia Herzegovina as still potential candidates for uh, EU membership. Just to say, uh, also to give you a picture, if I'm sure you know, but still uh, just to remind ourselves how large um, uh, these countries all are or how um, uh, populated they are. Um, Croatia is approximately 4.2 million people. Bosnia Herzegovina officially is 3.5, 3.3, depending 3.4. Unofficial is probably less than 3 million. And nowadays, Montenegro is around 600,000 people. Serbia is around 7 million or just a little below 7, 7 million or around 7 million. Kosovo is uh, 1.8 million. Macedonia is uh, approximately 2 million and Albania is around 3 million uh, people. In... Um, um, the topic again, as I said, uh, of migration in the in the Western Balkans, we are going to divide divide uh, divide in in um, uh, three uh, 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 blocks. One is I would like to explain to you, or I would like to bring you to um, a situation of the refugee crisis in 2015. Uh, which uh, for Europe has been a defining moment in our very recent history of European um, uh, integration, European solidarity, migration management, and um, uh, populist politics, and all the political challenges that we have had since, since then. They did not start, obviously, with the refugee crisis, but the refugee crisis brought them to the front. And uh, I think it's the fact we are still living in, uh, in Europe. Ivan Krastev called the refugee crisis of 2015 as Europe's 9-11. Uh, Nothing in Europe is going to be the same uh, after, after this uh, event. Um, to keep us, I could say a lot, about uh, or, um, broader European implications of um, the refugee crisis um, and, uh, and the bro broader regional uh, dynamic, but let us stick to our topic uh, of migration through the Balkan route or migration and what it means for the Balkan uh, countries. In uh, our oh, Siri is helping me to give this lecture. I hope you don't hear this. Um, uh, over 700,000 uh, migrants um, or refugees uh, crossed into uh, the EU uh, over the Balkans. And um, when I say uh, cross into, I should say again, uh, and that would be a correct uh, explanation because um, in 2015, the main um, migration influx came, came from uh, Asia and the Middle East, um, not from Africa, but for example, Italy uh, through the Mediterranean issue is usually um, accustomed to. So this was a wave of Syrian refugees and then uh, uh, and then uh, adding Afghans and Iraqi and uh, Iranians uh, and Pakistani later on and so on, uh, which crossed uh, from Turkey and then uh, by boats uh, entered um, um, Greece and from there through the Balkans uh, to, to Europe. So migrants were already in a Schengen country or they were already on the EU territory uh, then exit, uh, made exit from the um, uh, Schengen area in order to re-enter Schengen area again. So just to keep in mind this geopolitical and also administrative uh, context of the uh, European migration and asylum uh, management. 
I will switch, uh, I will keep these uh, issues in mind, uh, the different reactions of the countries in the region and the humanitarian versus, versus security um, approach. But let us look at, at the map. And this is a map of 2015-2016 refugee uh, route through, uh, through the Balkans. As you can see, uh, refugees were um, uh, coming uh, from Turkey. Uh, and then through uh, the uh, Aegean Sea into Greece and then to uh, Macedonia, Serbia. And then initially they were going directly from Serbia to Hungary. But then Hungary erected a fence and closed its border with Serbia in um, August uh, 2015, which then meant that the Balkan route was rerouted and then refugees were uh, crossing Macedonia, Serbia, entering Croatia and then going again to Hungary in order to go to Austria and further on. Uh, and then Hungary erected a fence, a uh, wired fence with Croatia in September 2015, which then meant another rerouting. And refugees from Serbia were crossing into Croatia and then from Croatia to Slovenia and then further on to Austria, Italy, Germany and and so on. The, the border between, uh, the land border between um, Turkey and Bulgaria and Greece and Bulgaria, which could be and has been often a uh, migrant route uh, in the past and is still active, but in much, much, much uh, smaller numbers, has been basically sealed off by, uh, by Bulgaria and therefore uh, refugees, which would be an easier uh, route, a land route, did not take this one, but were going through uh, the sea and then entering Greek islands and from there um, trying to uh, reach uh, uh, Western Europe through, through the Balkans. Um, also, uh, on this map, you can see that uh, Albania, Kosovo, Montenegro, and um, Bosnia Herzegovina are not a uh, route that migrants took to uh, enter the uh, European Union. In 2015, 2016, uh, basically, uh, these countries were left out uh, by migrants. This is not the case now, but it was, uh, it was then. Um, a few words about uh, the uh, few words about responses of the countries uh, in the region, um, and I look um, I attach to to this lecture. So one of the references that I'm sending is a report that I uh, wrote with a colleague of mine uh, at the time in um, uh, the spring of 2016, where we analyzed the Balkan route and six uh, four countries on the Balkan route, Macedonia still at that time, uh, named uh, Macedonia, Serbia, Croatia, and Slovenia. And we analyzed how they responded to the refugee crisis. Um, um, if I can make a small digression here, uh, I still prefer to uh, call the um, refugee or migrant um, influx in 2015 and 2016 as the refugee crisis because it was primarily driven by Syrian refugees uh, um, trying to um, find shelter or solution for, for their existence uh, and moving from Turkey uh, into, into the EU. Um, it then became, uh, at least in terms of terminology, refugee slash migrant uh, crisis because it was not only refugees as it, as it was explained who were coming uh, so people seeking um, uh, protection uh, from their countries in which they do not have one so fleeing wars or uh, prosecution um, but they were joined by um, people who were um, economic migrants as this is uh, usually explained and in that sense the um, legal right to protection is not necessarily uh, granted or is not granted at all uh, unless they can prove that their life is threatened by some other means but these are more uh, legal uh, or normative um, uh, discussions 
However, just to avoid any confusion why I speak about refugee crisis and then migration crisis is because uh, I really would like to stress the humanitarian uh, and the human aspect of the crisis in 2015-2016, which doesn't mean that it doesn't exist today, but uh, the political context has changed so much that even a uh, uh, small uh, dose of humanitarian approach to the issues that perplex us today in, in, in terms of how we view migration into Europe are uh, uh, almost totally gone and they shouldn't be in, in my opinion. I really think that we should consider our continent and then uh, by that by that token the same world, the, our world as one same territory and that we need to help when uh, and how we can. It doesn't mean that we need to uh, open fully borders as uh, um, populists and uh, um, far-right and uh, right-wing politicians claim. It doesn't mean that at all, but that we need to understand that problems of migration are not going to be solved by one country, are not going to be solved by um, a selfish approach, uh, are not going to be solved by um, a short uh, term um, policies and uh, are not going to be solved in a way that uh, maximizes one, one's uh, interests and undermines fully the interests of others only in, the, uh, in our ability to comprehensively view challenges that our world faces, I think we can try to find solutions that are sustainable and uh, relatively, relatively fair. Um, just as with this pandemic, I mean, it's a challenge that uh, none of the countries can solve by itself. And we understand that we are uh, uh, much more interdependent than we or as at least some of our uh, politicians would like to think. Uh, going back to 2015 uh, and refugees uh, and migrants coming from Greece to uh, Macedonia, Serbia, um, Croatia and Slovenia. Um, in, this, in this phase, uh, this is late uh, fall of 2015 and early spring of 2016 before the, uh, the route was closed. Uh, we have, uh, at the time, Slovenia and Croatia as EU member states. Ah, ah, ah. Um, uh, so Croatia and Slovenia as EU members and Serbia and Macedonia as a candidate. Both candidates were negotiating one, waiting to start negotiations uh, with the European Union. And uh, the uh, EU membership did not um, uh, did not uh, determine how uh, these countries would uh, react to uh, to the uh, crisis. So we had Croatia and Serbia, who primarily at that time had a humanitarian uh, approach to refugees. They did not invite them to stay, but at least they did not um, uh, forcefully um, uh, treat, they did not forcefully uh, kick them out, they did not treat them with um, uh, force. We had lots of volunteers uh, in the field. Uh, um, refugees were basically uh, free to move through the territory and uh, media coverage was quite um, empathic. Uh, Towards, towards the plight of these um, unfortunate uh, individuals. And uh, one interesting fact is that both Croatian media and Serbian media, both uh, Croatian politicians and Serbian politicians claim that each country had a humane approach uh, to this crisis because they uh, understand uh, how uh, refugees feel uh, since in their recent history, they uh, have many citizens who experience uh, the same um, uh, situation. And uh, although they were on the opposite side uh, in the war, the uh, reference uh, to personal experience was quite, was quite strong. Uh, Slovenia and Macedonia, on the other hand, one EU member state and another non-EU member state had similar approach. Uh, 
and uh, that was more security driven. Macedonia uh, had um, um, rightist uh, government, which was very, um, um, and Macedonia at the time was going through a series of political crises in the countries, and uh, the government assisted with, uh, by Austria and Hungary, um, I have to say at the time, approached um, um, the, um, um, the influx of uh, refugees as a security threat and decided to uh, protect the border. We saw violence at uh, the border in Dom at Domeni between Greece and, and Macedonia. And uh, uh, lots of um, uh, clashes and, and uh, uh, protests and, and deaths and lots of um, uh, nasty stories uh, coming from, from that part of the world uh, uh, at that time. Slovenia also had more security driven approach, but in a, in a different way. It asked and required and, and called for and, and pushed for a uh, European solution or Balkan solution in agreement with the European Union. And uh, it did uh, materialize in, in some form of uh, uh, agreement uh, because in October 2015 we had these countries uh, cooperating um, quite successfully, I would say, in sharing information uh, about the movement of refugees and the assistance that was needed uh, with, with the European Commission and, uh, and among themselves. Uh, you see here uh, some images of uh, the situation uh, at the time. Let me, I'm sorry, let me just see uh, if we have a time. Uh, this is also from uh, 2015. And we come, we come now uh, to a situation in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, and this is 2019-2020, where um, uh, the the uh, route which I was uh, explaining earlier, so Macedonia and then Serbia, and from there either Hungary directly or Croatia and Hungary, or then Croatia, Slovenia, Austria, Italy, Germany, and so on. The route is now um, primarily because Macedonia, uh, Macedonian route uh, or border between Macedonia and Serbia is still quite well uh, managed between Macedonia and Greece uh, also. Uh, refugees are managing to leave Greece and Albania, either through sea or still through Macedonian territory, but uh, not on the same old routes. And then from there going to uh, Montenegro, entering Bosnia-Herzegovina, and trying to reach this uh, part in Western Bosnia, uh, near Bihać and Velika Kladuša, from where they are entering uh, Croatia, and then Slovenia on a thin uh, strip of land uh, in uh, Croatia before, uh, uh, the, before the border with Slovenia, and then uh, in the Schengen area, or, or, uh, where they have full uh, freedom of movement. So uh, refugees are coming then from the south, and this presents a problem for Bosnia and Herzegovina. They're also coming from the east, so we still have approximately today around 8,000 uh, uh, migrants, refugees, more or less, uh, in, in Serbia. And they uh, are entering uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina from uh, the east, this part you don't see on the map, but um, with the exception of Brčko district, Bosnia is divided into two entities, and this eastern uh, border is basically controlled by police of Republika Srpska, which does not control the border um, quite um, efficiently. And we have many entries into the territory of Bosnia Herzegovina of migrants from Serbia, which then try to find their way to, to Bihać and the uh, Velika Kladuša region from where they are trying to enter Europe. So in terms of um, situation in Bosnia Herzegovina, which is anyhow under tremendous, I would say, um, structural um, uh, stress, is dysfunctional from uh, many aspects uh, in terms of um, uh, 
um, democracy, rule of law, um, um, rights of citizens, and so on and so on. And, and we can have a separate lecture on uh, data in Bosnia-Herzegovina and what can be done to make Bosnia-Herzegovina more functional, stable, and prosperous, which I think is possible. But we need to be uh, brave and um, and uh, also uh, determined to uh, make the function the, the country uh, work, which I don't think there is enough invest investment or commitment to such a vision of Bosnia Herzegovina. So to to place this migration element on already very precarious and very fragile Bosnian situation is almost calling for uh, a security threat. Um, and um, I can I can say a few words more if I have uh, time later on on what it means for Bosnia and Herzegovina. But um, just to say that uh, Bosnia cannot uh, handle the situation uh, on its own, and there are um, international organizations and international NGOs and local NGOs which are helping. Uh, approximately two thousand. Sometimes, I mean, it, it, it can, uh, numbers can, uh, can double, but it can also be uh, reduced. Um, uh, people are uh, accommodated in this area. And um, uh, some of them have been over the winter returned uh, here near Sarajevo. Some are now situated in um, um, erected, uh, newly erected camps. But the fact that refugees are still coming, or migrants are still coming, um, and new faces are appearing, means that they are still managing to enter the EU through this uh, strip of land illegally. And although the Croatian police, from this humanitarian approach that it had in 2015, uh, changed its attitude to the security driven, so we speak now about the securitization of migration in Croatia, where the border is harsh, Croatia employed new police force, it has now 6,000 um, um, strong police force to monitor the border, it has uh, received um, quite sophisticated equipment from the EU to uh, monitor uh, the borders, uh, it has also invested its own funds into buying equipment and training personnel and uh, um, uh, also physically uh, uh, protecting the border. But we hear many stories, unfortunately, also in local and in, uh, not so much in local, more in international media, in some local media, about mistreatment of, of uh, migrants and refugees. Here are a few... Uh, photos of um, uh, temporary or uh, accommodation and uh, not official accommodation of migrants in uh, Bihaj uh, area. Um, this is a makeshift camp and this is uh, a photo of this uh, one uh, uh, newly erected camp in Lipa near Bihaj um, which uh, has started which started operating now during the uh, pandemic. Uh, the mistreatment of uh, refugees that I uh, mentioned uh, uh, has now been repeated several times. We have uh, Amnesty International um, and, uh, and other organizations reporting of the violence um, uh, used against um, migrants uh, by Croatian police. And this obviously does not... Um, uh, help uh, resolve the situation um, of migration because, as I said, migrants are still managing to enter the European Union. It does not help the image of uh, uh, Croatia nor to the morale, I would say, of its police or its, its citizens, which still, I think, with uh, nostalgia, remember 2015 and, and more um, uh, human approach uh, to to the crisis, and uh, it certainly does not help Bosnia Herzegovina, where in as I said in a situation which is already uh, very uh, unbalanced, we have one region of Bosnia Herzegovina where migrants come and then they are thrown back, 
and this uh, this uh, northwestern tip of Bosnia Herzegovina uh, carries uh, this proportion of burden of broader European uh, migration trends, more that it can handle and more that it in any way deserves uh, to to handle. <coughs> To um, since I am limited uh, uh, with time, um, I gave you a picture of migration trends or migration uh, dynamics in the Balkans in the last five years, with starting with the crisis in 2015, and then uh, explaining how it has evolved, or what it means for the countries in the region uh, today. But I also said that I want to speak about more regional phenomenon uh, of migration, uh, and that is the emigration from, from uh, this region. I also uh, told you in the beginning the population, approximate uh, uh, population figures uh, in, in these countries, and uh, you realize these are not uh, large countries. Um, having uh, tens of thousands or now hundreds of thousands of citizens if you look at several years period, uh, leaving th these countries permanently means that uh, their potential for development, that their economic stability, that their uh, political um, uh, participation and the potential for change is, uh, is diminishing. Um, we have in the past, I mean, these countries have always been basically territory for immigration or uh, temporary residents, uh, workers with temporary residents in Western Europe who would uh, go back when they retire or after a certain number of years, their families would stay back home. Um, but they, they would work um, in construction or services or some other um, uh, professions. Now we have the whole families leaving, young families. We have uh, people who are... Um, uh, who have jobs and who have uh, material possessions, so not uh, uh, economic migrants, although uh, the majority are still people who have uh, no jobs and are seeking employment uh, in Western Europe. Uh, we have a uh, disproportionate number of young and educated people living, living for good. And uh, these countries then are losing their um, uh, resources, these human resources that they need for uh, development and um, uh, sustainability um, in the future. So the emigration from the region is becoming actually more and more uh, a serious uh, economic, uh, political, but also a security risk. And then again, uh, this is why I have here Croatia as an EU member state and then Bosnia and Serbia as uh, uh, non-members, uh, uh, that a difference is not that large. Actually, uh, we have now a trend or, or at least a small uh, uh, reduction of the number of people leaving Croatia, but uh, figures for Croatia were uh, higher in the first year since we joined the, the European Union, which again is uh, not something exceptional because this uh, happened with all countries in Eastern Europe once uh, they joined the, the European Union. But um, if you see Bosnia is uh, still the highest, Bosnia in Germany is the second largest uh, uh, country um, of uh, migrants after China. And then you can uh, imagine what is the difference in population between China and Bosnia and uh, understand uh, um, the uh, flux of, uh, um, of migrants coming uh, from Bosnia and from this region in total to Austria, Germany uh, and other countries in order for them to stay more or less permanently. They uh, have, uh, they establish families, they buy property, uh, we have new and different migrants than, than we had uh, before. Uh, in that sense, these countries are uh, losing, as I said, their human resources, their development potential. Uh, they educate these young people, but then they seek employment elsewhere. And then again, this is happening everywhere. It's happening in Italy, it's happening in Germany. Uh, but uh, the... Uh, 
the level of development that these countries have in comparison to some more developed countries means that they will be slower in catching up and the difference in uh, the gap is going to increase um, if nothing is uh, uh, going to change uh, relatively soon. Um, obviously, this is resulting in depopulation, in uh, the aging of population, and all the social, economic, and political uh, consequences that, that come from such a situation. In um, um, political terms, so in terms of um, um, political um, programs, obviously the existential fear of one's nation or one's the security and the uh, uh, longevity, the uh, stability of one's country feeds. If there is uh, uncertainty, it feeds fears. Populists are. Um, Master, masters of uh, using fears as political tool and we do have the rise of extremist rhetoric of uh, radicalization of uh, populist um, um, uh, discourse and the narrative rising nationalism intolerance and so on and so on the um, uh, last element that I want to talk is this dynamic um, about the European Union and the uh, uh, Western Balkans. In 2015, uh, the um, Western Balkan countries uh, could say that they were uh, quite tolerant towards um, refugees. But what it in reality meant is that uh, they helped them, but they helped them leave basically they did not help them to come and uh, they did not stop them from coming but then they helped them leave their countries because they said they anyhow didn't want to to stay in um, serbia in croatia uh, macedonia but uh, which is true but uh, to be fully fair and now we're having several years of migration influx we haven't seen any change of political or official uh, uh, rhetoric towards uh, migration. These countries, I speak about Western Balkan countries, but I include uh, Croatia in that fully, is that they do not foresee or they, they, they do not offer a possibility, um, even, even imagine a possibility of a larger number of migrants staying in their countries. Although they have <coughs> depopulation, as I said, and um, the uh, shortage of jobs is going to be uh, even more evident, hopefully, as these countries develop um, more in the future. And obviously now with the pandemic, we are all going to um, experience economic recession and um, maybe reset in some of the industries, for example, in Croatia with tourism. But um, there is a potential for a stronger economic development of the Western Balkans and being left without workers, being left without um, uh, young educated people, being left without uh, people in service industry, um, they will need um, uh, workers if, uh, if this is at least uh, one element how they could offer uh, hospitality and um, some sort of and, and residence to uh, at least some migrants who are uh, trying to um, find better life in, in Western Europe. But this hasn't happened yet. These countries still consider themselves very poor. Uh, victims of history, victims of others, uh, unable to um, manage their destinies and therefore not capable of seeing a potential uh, for expanding basically their uh, uh, population and adding uh, some new people to, uh, to its uh, citizens. And um, I have no doubt that this, is, this will happen at some point, but um, we, are not, we are not there yet. Um, to be fully fair to them, although I say, I think politically at least, uh, these countries should send a message that if some migrants want to stay, if they um, uh, follow the rules, basically, if they obey laws, if they want to work and contribute in a constructive way to the society, that they are welcome and that they will be assisted in terms of learning the language or helping with initial um, settling um, uh, difficulties, 
but this is still lacking and I hope it will come at some point. At the same time, they are not pushed, the governments in the region are not pushed by migrants uh, to do so because migrants seriously don't want to stay uh, in these countries. We have very, very low uh, uh, asylum application rate. And uh, even when we do, for example, out of 100 applicants, less than 20 appear for first interviews because usually asylum uh, application procedure is used to uh, gain a few days or few weeks of time to, to have a recess to maybe get in contact with family members or try to find a new route, wait for money to come or simply uh, heal uh, uh, or get a medical treatment if, if needed and then uh, they, uh, they leave again. So they basically apply and then the, the procedure uh, starts and the first hearing uh, person is no longer in Croatia or uh, in some other countries. Um, and uh, because they are not staying, they are not creating communities, we don't have traditional kin communities of migrants uh, in these countries who could help them settle in. So um, if we speak uh, broadly about migration out of Europe, through the Balkans to primarily Western Europe, these people are only in transit. They are not staying. And then if we add to them local people who are leaving, we have this just huge exodus of people or movement of people through the Balkans uh, to, to uh, Western uh, Europe. I need to be uh, finishing uh, soon. Uh, so I have uh, just want to say a few words about intra-regional, intra-Bosnian dynamic about the Bosnian I already uh, uh, mentioned. Intra-regional, I can only underline um, uh, the, um, uh, the problem of trying to resolve uh, or uh, tackle an issue like migration uh, on a national level. We have Slovenia accusing Croatia, we have Croatia throwing migrants or pushing them back into Bosnia, we have Bosnia complaining about behavior. Serbia on one hand pushing forward migrants uh, into Bosnia and then having Croatia pushing back migrants into, into Bosnia. Um, and uh, this, uh, this whole um, ping pong uh, game with, with migrants is not helping regional stability, is not helping building mutual trust, is certainly uh, adding to uh, the um, burden and uh, um, trouble that migrants are experiencing and is not resolving anything. If, if it could resolve, uh, migration issue through uh, very nationalized but efficient and, and strong policies uh, we will have succeeded so far but we are not um, succeeding and obviously this is this is not a way because the uh, challenge is much broader it goes beyond ability of any single government to resolve it uh, on its own and then uh, just a word on pandemic and migration. Obviously, due to uh, the pandemic, migrants um, cease to come first in very large numbers. This is one thing. Uh, so they were slower to come. And then second, they were slower to move because the restriction of movement and closed borders. So illegal entry was less easy than um, if it is ever easy, but certainly more complicated than uh, it usually is. Uh, it only means also that smugglers and criminal networks earn even more uh, in, these, uh, in these times because they charge more for, for illegal entry and, uh, and um, uh, further uh, uh, victimize these people and undermine uh, the um, ability of governments to um, successfully uh, manage or control, control uh, movement of uh, people, legal or uh, illegal. And then a few concluding remarks um, of the map that um, I started with. And as you, as you know, uh, Western Balkans is surrounded by uh, EU member states. So we have um, Greece, and then Bulgaria, 
Romania, Hungary, um, Austria, Italy, Slovenia, Croatia, um, and so on. So the uh, the six countries are basically uh, not uh, candidates for enlargement because the EU is not expanding. It's simply filling in uh, the territory that it already uh, surrounds. In that context, the uncontrolled or unmanaged Western Balkans are uh, primarily if the EU is thinking of itself as, as a real politic actor, is security concern and security uh, actor. We have seen, and uh, this is yet a third topic that we could discuss in the context of Western Balkans, is the role of the external actors of Russia, China, Turkey, um, uh, Gulf countries uh, in some cases in, the recent, in recent decades uh, where we have seen basically the um, reduction of the EU uh, uh, agency and therefore uh, more room for agency or for activities of these non-European and usually um, um, confrontational uh, external actors. The United States is the, is the country which is very important in this, um, uh, in this region, has been uh, EU partner uh, and uh, we obviously hope it will remain uh, partnering the EU, EU uh, in stabilizing uh, this region, but uh, uh, the uh, change transatlantic relations, Brexit, is also adding another dimension for uh, stabilization and, uh, and um, of the Balkans and uh, assistance in building uh, stable democratic institutions with which the EU uh, can partner rather than um, uh, overseeing um, state building and development. The EU has a problem in partnering countries that have different uh, political and um, political systems. And uh, uh, if the EU is there to build countries, unfortunately, it is uh, failing. It doesn't. It doesn't succeed um, uh, successfully. We have seen lots of accusations from one side and the other. Western Balkans accusing the European Union of not being serious about enlargement. West, uh, the European Union accusing Balkans about not being serious about uh, implementing reforms. Uh, and uh, and uh, in the in the meantime, we have uh, emigration of people. We have. Uh, security deterioration, and uh, and we have the um, um, the um, divergence uh, of vision of what Europe will look uh, like in a in a decade to come or decades to come, taking into account the internal European dynamic, um, also in um, in the last few years. Um, the only thing, uh, the last thing that I want to say about. Um, in the region of the Western Balkans is that eventually the European Union or uh, any other um, um, international community actor can help, but the uh, real agency for change, uh, the, the ability or mobility uh, for uh, mobilization for change has to come from, from within this region. If uh, these countries can be helped, they should be helped in a way to strengthen and support local forces who are fighting for uh, establishing the rule of law, uh, who are fighting corruption in their countries, who are um, uh, fighting for strong democratic institutions and uh, human rights protection of minorities, all the values of Liberal, liberal democracy that the uh, European Union is based on. If um, uh, the EU leaves these countries and only send them economic assistance, that means that they are failing to see that there are uh, partners on the ground who may not be the politicians who are in power, but citizens who can be a new generation of leaders and, and uh, politicians. Um, in these countries in which, uh, uh, in which they will uh, create change and bring um, uh, different uh, development and hopefully then uh, speed up the process of the um, EU integration of this region into, into the European Union. In that context, uh, migration is uh, important, 
But then again, Western Balkans is not deciding on anything. They are simply um, um, uh, reflecting a broader international and a broader European uh, migration dynamic, especially in relationship to uh, Africa and Asia, the Middle East, where Balkans is only a territory uh, that will uh, act um, partially to protect itself, but even more forcefully in cooperation. In that context, one shouldn't worry that Balkans is going to do something um, um, something that uh, will undermine uh, European uh, security uh, by by for, by intention. Um, I could go on and on, but I think I'm really fully fully done uh, with this uh, lecture. Um, I would like to thank you, wave you again from from Zagreb. Uh, wish you success with your studies and um, wish you a great summer. Thank you for your attention. Bye guys, let me just now uh, end this lecture.